Hi, so I've had my Dremel Digilab laser cutter now for about a month and a half, and I've been using it, so I thought I'd do an update video and just tell you about the experience. So last time you saw us unbox it, and I got it all set up and ready to go, and it wouldn't actually do the test firings because you have to align it first. So I worked with the uh, Dremel support, and I figured out that the tube was actually broken, which is a complete fluke. But I actually still have the laser tube, and you can see if you come in pretty close, um, that whole crack. And what that does is it takes away the vacuum that the laser's in, and the, the laser just doesn't fire. So there wasn't anything inherently dangerous about it. We just had to get a new laser tube before we can use it. And when this was in there, that's right where the bracket was. So, like I said, fluke accident. Uh, Dremel support was amazing. They were super responsive. They helped talk through it. And then when they shipped me the new tube, they actually had someone Skype with me to help me install it and make sure it went in right. And then stay on the line with me until I did my first laser cut. And so that was really awesome, and thank you Dremel for all of that help. So the laser cutter has a couple of different parts to it. This is the actual cutter itself. If you come on in, we have the screen, which you'll see on once I turn on. Uh, we have the, the start button. We have the little puck you use to do the Z-depth, which I'll show in a later video. Um, inside here, we have the honeycomb and then the, the gantry and the actual laser cutter with the um, lenses and everything. The laser tube is actually inside of this shield, and then when it's running, you can see the little fluorescent laser bits going by. So hopefully we can get that on video and show you. It's so cool. The other parts are the hex box here. This is um, doing water cooling to make sure that the laser doesn't get too hot. So you can see you put water into this um, part here and then it pumps it back and forth in, in these lovely tubes uh, into the laser cutter itself. It might be a little dark back here, but you get the idea. And then the last part is the ventilation. Right now we're just using the onboard fan. It goes out of the tube and then we've done um, a piece of insulation foam and then it runs out there pretty far. This is a temporary setup until we have the space set up in my studio, and then we'll actually have a permanent hole that goes outside, and we'll be using the booster fan, which they'll be sending me pretty soon. So that's the whole machine uh, set up for right now. All right, so now we're ready to turn it on. It's a little bit loud, and that's because that onboard fan starts up, and then it's also gonna test, uh, prime the pump for the water. So the button's right back here. You can hear the air intake right here for the, the fan that's in there. There's also air assist that is a little tube that goes into the, the laser cone itself and that's going to blow some of the uh, particulates out of the way so that it is assisting with that ventilation. You'll see it boot up with the screen here. That takes just a little bit of time. And then it'll do a system check to make sure all of the safety uh, pieces are engaged. So far, the most impressive features of this laser cutter are the, are the safety features. They've really made this easy to use and um, really user friendly and very, very safe. So it's nice to have that reassurance if you haven't used a laser cutter before. I've worked with epilogues and universals which are more of a, a heavier duty laser cutter. And, and this one performs really well and is uh, much more approachable. So that was just testing the prime pump, and you can see right up at the top of this screen, if you look down there, it's checked the water, the air assist, the fan, and the lid to make sure that they're all good to go. Uh, if it, the lid is open, which Dan is doing right now, you can see it turns red. 
and then you can really easily check all of those safety pieces before you start laser cutting. So material wise I've mostly been laser cutting wood and I've been using um, boards from the Dremel materials. Uh, this is 1 8 inch birch plywood. So it's got a really nice finish. The nice thing about getting it from Dremel is that it's very flat. I also have some other wood boards that are thicker that I got to try out and they're not flat and it makes it a little hard to do uh, engraving because it actually kind of messes with the focus a little bit. So I'm, I'm still looking for uh, other sources of materials. So I'm working with this birch mostly and I'm going to show you an example file. I don't push it all the way up into the, the corner because it allows me to engrave all the way to the edge of the material. Um, you'll see in a later video as it's engraving it needs a little bit of extra space on either side so it can do that offshoot uh, and then that way that allows me to use as much material as possible. Uh, in order to laser cut properly we have to change the Z depth so that it can focus on the top of the material. To do that with Dremel I've unlocked the gantry I used the little puck that it came with, and then I'm going to adjust the laser head. There's a, um, a manual screw on the other side, and now I'm screwing it in tight, and you can see that is the proper depth now. So that's how that works. I'm going to relock that. For the materials that Dremel sells, and for some additional materials, they have default settings for it and that's for engraving and for cutting and for scoring. What I like to do for my type of files is have multiple levels of engraving so I can have a depth and I like to have very fine control over that so I'm not going to use a black and white image. So in order to figure that out, those settings out for Verge, I did a test material cut. Uh, kind of playing with the settings that Dremel provides and I'll do a whole video on the, the settings for a different video on my channel. And this just gives me a good feel for the color that I'll get and the type of finish I'll get when I'm doing these settings on my birch. So whenever I'm setting up my files, I just take this over to my computer with me and then I pick what uh, number settings that I want to use based on the effect I want to get. So in order to laser cut, um, you have to interface with general software that they've made. This is a little bit different than some other laser cutters and a lot of the new hobby laser cutters are starting to do this. So how you access this uh, software is when the laser cutter is on, you can connect to it via the same Wi-Fi or through the cloud. So that's really nice because um, I don't have to have it on my computer and I can access it from any of uh, the computers that we own. If you take a look, when you open up the software, the first thing that you can see the whole bed, you see the little red point where the laser is currently sitting, which is really helpful. So take a look. I put my laser in the exact corner of my material, and now I can see exactly where that is. That saves me time for laying out the file. Okay, so now I have my file ready. I've got four layers in this file because I've got three layers, three different depths I want to do for the engraving and then one layer for the cutting. So I've lined them all up and you can see that this file, I've used the red dot in order to figure out exactly where it should go on the material. But also there's a cool feature on this later laser cutter that I haven't really seen on the other ones I've used called run perimeter. So when I click that, it starts going all the way around the uh, file on the material as well. So I can see exactly where it's going to fit and that allows me to stuff in extra little files into uh, pieces of wood that have quite a bit of like empty space. So that saves me time and material and that, that's pretty nice. So I've specified all of my laser settings for this and my material and I'm going to go ahead and send it over. It gives me the ability to change which order it's going to do the files, which is really nice because I'll, I'll do my um, darker rastering first and then my right, lighter rastering in order to uh, make sure there's not too much burn in the lighter area. So I'm going to go ahead and send. And now it's 
already out over on my laser cutter. You can see the name of the file. It's already checking all of my safety pieces. And then I'm just going to double check. I already did my Z depth. Uh, this is definitely a machine of, of material that's la laserable. And they also ask that you stay at the laser. So double click the button. And it starts the file. So it's starting with that first um, darkest engraving layer. And if you look at the screen, it gives an estimate on how much time it's going to take. That's really awesome because on other lasers that I've worked with, uh, you'll it counts up. So by counting down, I know exactly how long it's going to take from the first time I cut the file. And then it also gives me the ability to pause or stop the file. If you look closely, you can see the laser actually going through the laser tube. Wow, that's super bright. Yeah, that's awesome. And that is behind that shield so that you don't mess up your eyes. Now you can see it running here. You can also see the, the smoke coming up from the engraving going into that fan that's over there. done cutting or printing I let it sit for just a little bit to kind of get the rest of the exhaust out. The honeycomb also captures some of that smoke so I'll try to scoot it out of the way and get that smoke out without leaving it completely open. And like I said this is a temporary setup for the ventilation. We'll have much better ventilation pretty soon and we'll do a video when that is up and ready. Here's my final rocket ship pendant. It's got a little astronaut in the porthole. You can see how much uh, material the laser cutter took out and the three different depths. So my darkest depth are these holes and some of the lines. My medium depth is the, the cone and the engine. And my lightest depth is the middle of the, the fire and uh, the astronaut's helmet. So I'm planning on using this laser cutter to make a lot of fun jewelry and, and different products and uh, make some 3D toys and stuff by building it all together and just like experimenting and having fun. So I'll keep posting and sharing what I'm making along the way and uh, keep doing reviews as I've used this machine for longer. Thanks for watching.